of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Back to your program, Treasures. We are commenting on the book of Acts, chapter 14. Um, in the last time, we spoke about the stoning of St. Paul, and you all know that he lived again, and he spoke about the tribulation and the importance of the hardships and the hard times in our way to be purified and to enter the kingdom of God. Now we are in verse 23rd, chapter 14. So when they had appointed elders in every church, so after finishing the uh, program of preaching the word in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, and they strengthened their faith after a very hard time with the persecution. Now they wanted to leave, so they appointed some priests. And the word elders is not the perfect word in translation. Actually, this translated into presbyters, which are the priests. So the ordained priest for them in all these cities. And that was the program of their missionary service, that wherever they go, they stay for some time preaching the good news and teaching the people what are the ritual they should do as Christians and all the commandments given by the Lord Jesus Christ. And after they have a good congregation, they have to appoint one of them as a priest and they will follow the priest after. And prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So they had to go in order to, you know, kind of reporting to the fathers of the church. So, and after they had passed through Bisidia, they came to Pamphylia. Now, when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. And if they are taking their way back now, home to Antioch. From there, they sailed to Antioch. Antioch, from which they moved like three years before to start this journey where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. So all this service were supervised by the Lord, by the Spirit, guided by the grace of God. They felt like carried by the hands of God. They are not, you know, making many plans because according to the circumstances and persecution waves and attacks of the non-believers said, so they felt like God was taking them from this city to the other city. They covered many, many cities unexpectedly in the first journey in Asia. Now, when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them. So happily, they were gathered, made the gathering with all the church members and started to tell them uh, about all what, what happened in the last few years in other cities. God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So it was all about the Gentiles' salvation now, because in most of these cities it was not about the Jew side, now it becomes like mostly Gentiles accepting the word of God. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. That's their, you know, city. That's the Sea of Antioch. It's like a big church now in Antioch and big congregation and many servants and serving many people. So they stayed for a good time. Chapter 15. And certain men came down from Judea and told the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now we will face a new challenge, a big problem facing the early church. That's a heresy attacking the church. False teaching coming from some Christians who were Pharisee or who were very strong Jew people. 
So they started to preach everywhere, knowing that many Gentiles started to accept Christian faith. They started to say no one should be um, accepted in the body of Christ without circumcision. And they visited Antioch, coming from Jerusalem. So they visited Antioch, started to attack Paul and Barnabas in their way because they were speaking about the Gentile salvation. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. Because, you know, these people were saying falsely that this is the teaching of the apostles. That's the teaching of Peter, John, and James, and others. So, although Paul and Barnabas were very strong in defending their faith and saying the Gentiles accepted faith like us and they are ready to be, be members in the church, and there is no need for the circumcision for these people. But when they knew that the teaching coming from the apostles, they had to refer to the apostles. That's why they, you know, made a decision to travel up to Jerusalem in order to speak to the heads of the church. So being sent on the way by the church, the church in Antioch sent Paul, Barnabas, and others in order to sit with the high apostles of the church in order to deal with this question. They passed through Phoenicia and Samaria describing the conversion of the Gentiles. So they kept preaching the good news about the Gentiles' faith because they were strong in their experience so when they uh, passed by Samaria churches and Phoenicia churches coming from Antioch in the northern part, you know, walking up to Jerusalem, passed by many other cities in which there were a good number of people believing in Christ, but mostly from the Jew side, they started to preach the experiences of Gentiles in the church with no circumcision describing the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy to all the brethren. All the good Christians were very happy listening to the news of the Gentiles because any good heart accepting Christ as the real God and Savior, he will accept also that the salvation is not only for the Jews but also for the Gentiles. So for any pure heart, this news will please him more. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. So when they, you know, arrived to Jerusalem, they were received happily by the apostles and the elders of the church. The elders for our faith that's the word of the bishops, you know, uh, the apostle, the disciple, the twelve disciples, and the seventy disciples are the heads of the churches, and they started to have bishops and priests. And they reported all things that God had done with them. They were not praying themselves, they were not speaking about themselves, they were not boosting or showing off, they were just telling them what happened in these cities, what kind of miracles happened, how God moved it this way, and how much persecution they faced. And uh, through all these, the word of God spread very quickly, and hundreds and thousands of people believed and were baptized. But some of the sect of the Pharisee, so they came saying so, telling them about the report of the Gentile service and also the problem happened in Antioch. 
who believed rode up saying it's necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So that was a problem because they already baptized many people with no circumcision, with no law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. They made the council, they made a, a very important meeting. And that was the start of the councils in the history of the church. The heads of the church should sit together to discuss any question. And with the grace of God, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, with the humble hearts, they feel like the presence of Christ among them. And any decision should be taken by all church leaders because they had to follow the word of God. They have to follow the holy tradition. So they have to make a decision together, not by one of them. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rode up and said to them. So they had long discussion, but Peter rose up and spoke for himself saying, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Speaking about the story of Cornelius many years ago, because now we are in the year like 51st in the first century, the story of Cornelius happened like not less than seven years before that time. So, knowing that Peter himself, St. Peter, he is the one who was chosen by God to start preaching the word of God to the Gentiles. Cornelius was not a Jew. And he baptized Cornelius and his friends, his family members, with no circumcision. So, St. Peter stood by the side of Barnabas and Paul saying, it was me. I started this. Do not blame Paul or Barnabas for what they had done because no one to be blamed. That's the plan of God. That's the wisdom of God. So God, who know the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. The witness of Sam Peter was very strong. You know, he was on the side of St. Paul saying, I saw because of these pure hearts that the Holy Spirit dwelled upon them at exactly as happened to us. So how could we disrespect these people and say they had to be Jew before being Christians and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So they accepted the sound doctrine. They believed in Christ. They followed all the teaching. So how could we, you know, consider them as non-believers? Now, therefore, why do you test God? By putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our father nor we were able to bear. Actually, he was, you know, very bold in this very strong in this, very courageous, because he said it clearly. We could not bear this yoke before. We couldn't do all the requests of the law of Moses. We couldn't be up to the expectation of God, we, the circumcised people. Now, why do we ask people to be circumcised? That's not our teaching now. Christ did not come to teach people you have to have the circumcision in your bodies. Christ came to save us. Christ came to put the, the spirit in our hearts, to consider us the children of God, the children of the kingdom of heaven by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You all know the word yoke. Yoke, it's like a wooden bar put, putting on the heads or the necks of the animals who used to move heavy things. 
and this yoke was really heavy. And um, when two animals moving together, the stronger one will carry much more than the other one of the heavy, of the burden of the yoke. So they considered the law of Moses like a yoke, a heavy one. And the circumcision ritual, it's not accepted by most of the Gentiles because they did not love to be Jew. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. We are saved now by the grace of Jesus Christ, not by circumcision, not by the yoke of the law. So why we should preach the circumcision, circumcision or the law? Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. Did Paul and Barnabas speak about the miracles to show off and to tell people we had done great things? Actually, no. But they had to prove that by the wonders and miracles, God was blessing their service. God put his hand clearly in the service of the Gentiles. God was happy accepting these people by faith and by the baptism. And there were no need for circumcision or the teaching of the rituals of the law of Moses. So when they reported also for the miracles and wonders God had done through them, it's kind of another witness to the strong, sound, safe doctrine received by the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. James was the head of the church at that time. It's he is not James, thus the brother of John, the, the evangelist, because the other James died in chapter 12. He was killed by the hands of Herod. This James, the one who was considered the brother of the Lord himself, because most probably he the son of Halfa, the son of Clobe, the son of uh, the other Mary, the sister of Saint Mary, our great mother. So they, they considered him the head of the church at the time because he was uh, older than most of them and he was very much respected by all men in Jerusalem. He was well known by his pure heart and a very good Jew be before becoming the bishop or the, the apostle of Christ. So he was the figure of the church at that time. So after the speech given by Peter, now the speech will be given by St. James, the head of the church at that time, and he will support the position of Paul and Barnabas and the Gentile service so much. We will see it next time. Glory to God. Amen. <music>